Hello and welcome to Money Life. This time I'm starting this column on an upbeat note. Or in fact, it's about good news. That's a surprise to many of you who've been watching these videos regularly, but there is reason to be a little optimistic, I think. Let's start with what is happening to one big sector which is industrialists who have dumped bad loans on the banking system. And I think we're seeing a lot of action there. I must confess that the first term of this government, which I'd like to call Modi Sarkar 1, ended with a bit of a disappointment. Our bad loans had increased to over 10 lakh crore. The government seemed to be running out of ideas. There was talk about going after people who stashed money abroad, money laundering, there's a bankruptcy law, but things were just moving too slowly. And the number of scams that were coming out were numbing. You had the whole collapse of ILFS, the huge impact that it's had on the non-banking finance sector, people like Divan Housing. Then you had the big Anil Ambani group, which had sort of crashed its market capitalization with all kinds of dubious deals coming out. And the big defaulters seem to be getting away. I mean, look at the SR case, nothing had happened. And we're beginning to wonder if things in the Modi government were going to be more of what happened over the last 30, 40, 50 years since independence. And since this government likes to make comparisons, that's what we were worried about. But I must say that Modi Sarkar too has begun extremely well. And I'm quite heartened at some of the developments. I think you need to put these together, join the dots to realize the enormity of action that has happened. And I'm talking about things that happened even before the budget. The budget has come up with a lot of things, but I think this is required to be able to send a signal that you can't get away with cheating, you can't get away with dumping bad loans on banks and pretend that it's a business uh, default and get away. India is a country, it's a very well-known saying that India is a country with sick industry and very rich industrialists and that seemed to be true until recently. Now this government seems determined to go after that wealth no matter how and what and doesn't matter that they've gone through bankruptcy dealings let me talk you know obviously this has sent shock waves through industry they don't like what's going on they don't like the swift action that's taking place they don't like how quickly charge sheets are being filed and there's a lot of lobbying and pressure to say what is going on let us off you would see people on social media saying that don't go after industry for genuine business defaults but we know that many of them are not genuine Project costs are inflated tremendously, money siphoned off, shell companies are set up. This has been the norm. And I think these industrialists do not require sympathy and I hope the government is not going to budge. In fact, in a recent column of mine, I've talked about Professor R. Vedanathan's book, India Aning, and a few numbers that it gives. And I think it's worth repeating them here. What Professor Vedanathan says is that big industry which accounts the bulk of our bad loans only accounts for 18 percent of our gross domestic product the gdp okay which means most of it comes from small medium businesses partnerships family enterprises they are contributing to 45 percent of the economy the rest comes from other sectors but big industry is only 18 percent in fact even foreign companies a big global multinationals he writes in his book are just about 10 percent and the savings which are affected so what happens when a big industrialist dumps bad loans of thousands of crores on the banking system it gets written off and banks as you know and i've been saying repeatedly have been recovering this money from us ordinary people where are the interest that we earn on savings and fixed deposits remains low and the banks are extracting all kinds of charges now guess what this country owes a lot to the money that we save so as professor vaidyanathan says 70 percent you know of domestic savings household savings contribute to 70 percent of domestic savings which means that instead of saying thank you to us and being happy that we are a nation of savers this money is being decimated by this one segment which requires no sympathy at all now let me talk about what exactly has been going on in the last few days that's making me feel so upbeat first i think for the first time ever 
the government is questioning three sets of people one the regulators so the first one that i've talked about earlier is that the reserve bank of india for instance for the first time has been asked to look at what happened internally when it comes to infrastructure leasing and financial services so this is this large collapse of a conglomerate with over 360 companies and there were rbi reports which apparently the inspectors had just sat on so rbi has been asked to conduct an internal investigation it's doing it the second set of people who need to be pulled up and are being pulled up are the rating agencies because like i said auditors raters regulators are people that we depend on when we make our investment and savings decisions and if these people do not do their job it puts our money our research and all the hard work that we do in jeopardy right so what has happened is the serious frauds investigation office which is doing a stellar job has discovered through its investigation of emails and other documents and interrogation of people that there were two rating agencies that looked at the ILFS fraud. So first was the bigger one, Crystal, which in 2016 apparently gave up rating. Why did it do that? Because according to a report in Money Control, Crystal was being pressured to give a better rating than it wanted to give in lieu of getting all kinds of other business and consultancy. This is a matter of debate whether rating agencies should be doing other business at all. Crystal apparently did the right thing and gave up the business. But we don't have a system where they reported it to the regulator. If they were forced to do it in 2016 instead of just dropping the rating, who knows, the ILFS story may have been completely different. The other rating agency that came in at that time was ICRA. And obviously, they succumbed to the pressure of getting more business in lieu of offering better ratings. The good news is that ICRA has been asked to send its CEO and managing director on leave. And it has been, it has done this. So you have Naresh Thakkar, they have announced to the stock exchanges, he's been asked to go unceremoniously on leave until further notice. I think that's just the beginning. So you have the rating agencies and you have the regulators. The third is the statutory auditors. So what has SFIO done? And we have talked about this earlier in one of our videos, which is to file a really quick charge sheet against Deloitte Haskin and Sells, which has been the auditor of ILFS's key company, IFIN, for 10 long years. And obviously there was a whistleblower's letter that which was sent to me, which I've shared also with, uh, with ILFS's new management, as well as the SFIO. And that talked about the kind of murky deals that were going on. So apart from Deloitte, the other auditor, BSR, has also been taken to court and SFI was asked for them to be banned for five years. So I think this really hits at the key, which is the auditors, statutory auditors, the regulators and the rating agencies, which is wonderful. The second set of people that have been targeted are big industry. And I'm going to talk here only of one major group, which is Bhushan Steel and Neeraj Singhal. Now, this man has a checkered history. In 2014, he was caught by the CBI trying to bribe the syndicate bank chairman, spent some time in jail, learned no lessons, has been arrested again in 2018 after an action by the government. This was tweeted by the finance ministry. Then in May, he was arrested for the third time. Meanwhile, what has happened is his he is one of the big 12 defaulters, the single group and Bhushan Steel, which were referred for bankruptcy proceedings. Bhushan Steel has been acquired by Tata Steel with a big haircut. So Tata Steel paid a lot of money, 32,000 crore, but banks still wrote off 20,000 crore. Now, a lot of us used to wonder what happens. So there's a write off, the banks take the loss. Do the promoters who caused this mess get away? because they remain immensely wealthy and they've been continuing to blow up money. There is, there are reports in, you know, the society pages about the kind of money that the single family has been spending on weddings. I'm so glad to see that the government has gone after them. So in May, Neeraj Singhal and his former CFO was arrested again and a 70,000 page case has been filed at Dwarka by the Serious Fraud Investigation Office. This is also commendable for the speed, not to mention the death, 70,000 
pages is a lot of pages even to lift and take to court but i'm glad to see that's happening so this is one of them the other worry that we have had is about the guys who just ran away so the whole nation was outraged when vijay malya did the you know scooting trick and went off to uk and has been tweeting from there the government has done a lot to corner him you know in at this time i need to put in perspective why this is so important over the decades the indian government has shown no interest in going after scamsters so i'm going to pause here and talk about the background so for 30 years plus as a journalist i've seen that you break stories scam after scam happens investigations are announced joint parliamentary committees are set up and after the first photo opportunity where you have the cbi marching uh, you know the key players to jail after that's done and dusted then it takes its own time it goes into a black hole charge sheets are not filed sometimes for years cases are diluted they're weak and then it they drag through courts for decades so at the end of it when a judgment comes out maybe 10 years 15 years 25 years later some cases of the 92 scam are still going on it has no meaning to anybody except maybe the person who's been indicted and a lot of times just simply let off nobody remembers nobody cares and this is the difference this time the speed with which things are happening another thing that happened over the years is that some cases just vanished into limbo so for instance do you know a lot of younger people don't even know the size of unit trust of india and the kind of giant role that it played in the indian capital markets uti just collapsed in the 90s that investigation has just tapered off two of the key players died but nothing happened it's just simply dropped nobody has been held responsible why uti i mean more than 35 years several trips abroad by groups of people and ministers do we even know who got the bofors kickbacks the bofors gun and the scandal around it brought down rajiv gandhi's government several decades ago and we don't know who got the kickback so this is our history and in this situation when you see the government going after people who thought this is a tried and tested way loot money from india keep it abroad in tax havens go overseas if you have more than a million dollars plus most countries are giving you a citizenship and then there's no question of extraditing anybody because our regulatory agencies could be relied on and fixed to do such a bad job that all we used to hear all these years is things being rejected so our people go abroad they say repatriate someone extradite someone and the answer would be we have a pathetic case we haven't written the right notes we haven't filed the right letter of gatries and so the answer used to be no no and no this time different so you have the diamond uh, you know jeweler nirav modi who's sitting in a london jail things to be seems to be going favorably vijay malya has been cornered he's now got one final appeal let's see how that goes but as he keeps tweeting take my money he would not have been saying it if the government didn't go after him with great determination one of the most dubious and egregious of these companies has been sterling biotech i've done multiple videos on it i'm not going to get into details but they owe over 14000 crore they're sitting in nigeria they've sent some money back and guess what our banks want to do they want to accept 45% because any money in the bank is good money and they wanted to allow him to continue now this is what i meant when i said that it used to be so worrying until we've seen the action this time so now what we see after the in the new term is that the enforcement directorate has attached properties of the sterling group not just in india they have done it in india already but overseas which means they have made a good case so that the courts abroad have given rulings in their favor the same thing with nirav modi a sister's account in singapore has been attached properties in nigeria oil fields airports private aircraft all kinds of things not airport aircraft have been attached which means that the money that was stashed away in nigeria which was their big bargaining chip when that is attacked they begin to start weakening and losing it's not just them 
remember like i said nirav modi is sitting in jail his properties here have been auctioned already the cars and artwork so nobody is waiting for anyone he's not able to drag it through courts because of the new law his uncle mehul choksi of gitanjali gems continues to give email interviews blaming punjab national bank owes over 14000 crore there has gone and got himself a citizenship of the caribbean islands uh, antigua and barbados and was sitting pretty but india again has used its clout overseas has done a good job with its representation so much so that the prime minister of antigua has given an interview in the local press which says that once proper procedures are complete this newly acquired citizenship in the, the tax haven will be scrapped and he'll be sent back well if he comes back and he spills the beans on how punjab national bank officials colluded with him then we can possibly go after the officials as well but the signal here whether it's sterling biotech and its political connections or gitanjali or nirav modi is that you can't sit abroad and think that you're getting away with it what was very heartening to me last week was a cbi conducted raids with a 300 strong team in 61 places and the people they went after included some may say it's a little too late but i actually had thought that winsome diamonds and suraj which you know actually led this whole business about jewelers creating losses of thousands of crores all of them are 7000 crore plus so before nirav modi and gitanjali was suraj diamonds or what he called winsome diamonds 7000 crore loss went away to send kids another tax haven and has been sitting pretty nobody went after him until now so last week the cbi raided some properties connected with him and happy to think that the government is now going to go after jatin mehta of winsome diamonds as well it's time that signal was sent those raids included a lot of smaller companies so what used to happen as one of our colleagues and former uh, writers veeresh malik has been saying is the middling scamsters these are not the really big ones who attract a lot of attention these are not the tiny ones who have personal guarantees and who are like a crore or less they are the ones about 100 crores or so significant amounts of money but not so big these have been sort of getting away with all kinds of dubious deals in fact the whole bankruptcy code and its implementation is about how these middling promoters have been colluding even with resolution professionals to get away now the cbi raids in 61 cities have gone after a whole bunch of them I'm not even you know going to name names because none of these names even ring a bell most of us don't know these companies and they've gone after them and said okay we are going to raid you we are going to get that money out which means this lot is going to start paying and i don't know if these names they make any sense to you but they include some ludhiana based supreme tech mart which owns owes 143 crore to state bank of india akin batteries which owes 99 crores ram nandi hotels and resorts which is 131 crore people like that and there are hundreds of them so like i said immense wealth built at the cost of banks and when you build it at the cost of banks to many public sector banks you're building it at our cost the cost of the public exchequer it was really long overdue that the government does something to restore confidence in the system and i think for the first time i'm seeing a glimmer of hope it's early days yet the momentum shouldn't be lost I hope nothing happens to stop the government doing what it's doing but if it continues like this I think we are in for better times less bad loans a little fear of law and a better country thank you